What's up everybody? It's Wednesday, October 12th. My name is Reagan. This is my second time recording this because the auxiliary jack was not plugged into the camera. Little things you gotta remember when recording. And again, I'm doing this for my own peace of mind. Life is a single player game. And although I do care moderately about reaching a thousand subscribers, honestly, I'm doing this so, again, I have peace of mind because when things start catastrophically breaking down by the end of this decade, I can say, yes, there were warning signs, and yes, I said them all along. All of this is happening right now, Lindsay. Right, I, I, the urgency, I think, has been lost on, on so many of us, but. In the 2020s, at least, when I became awake, as some other more well-known popular people have, if you wanna call them that. Let's talk about William Shatner the captain, when he traveled to space, all he saw was death. Quote, I saw a cold, dark, black emptiness. It was unlike any blackness you see or feel on Earth. It was deep, enveloping, all-encompassing. Whoa! Who are you? Oh. How's it hanging, death? You will come with me. No, we can't. We gotta get back to the babes. I turn back toward the light of home. I could see the curvature of earth, the beige of the desert, the white of the clouds, the blue of the sky. It was life, nurturing, sustaining life. Mother Earth, Gaia, and I was leaving her. Everything I thought I had thought was wrong. Everything I had expected to see was wrong. He has a book coming out. He's 91 years old. Bezos acted like a pretty much total douchebag when he came back down to Earth. Like, he's pretty well known for being a bro. Um, but William Shatner had some more affirming words to say. He said, 50 or 60 years ago, I read a book called Silent Spring by Rachel Carson. She wrote about the environmental issues that are still happening today, and I've been a verbal ecologist since then. I've been aware of the changing earth and my apprehension for all of us. It's like somebody owing money on a mortgage and they don't have the payments and they think, oh, well, let's go to dinner and not think about it. But it's so omnipresent. The possibilities of apocalypse are so real, it's hard to convince people, and especially certain political people, and this is not on our doorstep any longer. It's in the house. When I got up to space, I wanted to get to the window to see what it was out there. I looked into the blackness of space and there were no dazzling lights. It was just a palpable blackness. I believed I saw death. And then I looked back on Earth, given my background and having read a lot of things about the evolution of Earth over the past five billion years and how the beauty of nature has evolved. And I thought about how we're killing, how we're killing everything. I felt this overwhelming sense of sadness for the Earth, Mr. Shatner. Luckily though, I mentioned this before, NASA claims to be the serious defenders of planet Earth, according to the administrator Bill Nelson, as they have just launched the DART mission successfully, changing the trajectory of an asteroid Dimorphos when its spacecraft intentionally slammed into the rock. This is actually the first time that humanity intentionally changed the motion of a celestial object. But it isn't potentially going to happen. It is going to happen. Exactly, 99.78% to be exact. Oh, great. Call it 70% and let's just, let's move on. But it's not even close to 70%. You cannot go around saying to people that there's a 100% chance that they're gonna die. You do understand that this is an apocalyptic event. This is, okay. this is a large oh. celestial body heading towards our planet at, at, at speeds that are even... Lindy, I hear you. I hear you. I should be proud. Pretty cool. But how are we doing here on Earth? Not so hot. According to a CNN poll, just 22% of Americans rate economic conditions in the country as good, while 78% call conditions somewhat poor, are very poor. But we can launch rockets into space and deter asteroids pretty cool. Meanwhile, from the United Nations and World Meteorological Report urges faster action on clean energy. Clean energy. The UN Weather Agency issued an urgent appeal for Tuesday on Tuesday for governments everywhere to switch to cleaner forms of energy solar, wind, and hydroelectric power, if we were to thrive in the 21st century, 
we have to convert 75% of global greenhouse gas emissions, which come from dirty energy, and um, soon. Time is not on our side, he says, the chief says, and our climate is changing before our eyes. A complete transformation of the global energy system, he calls for. And so we can get to net zero by 2050. I would insert a laugh track right here, but I'm not going to do that. Let's jump over to today's climate news update. Lots of extreme events, as per usual. October 12th, this is your roundup. The whole North Atlantic Ocean surface is currently 1.1 degrees warmer Celsius than the 1970 to 2000 average. We know the baseline has been moved forward. We're fast approaching 2 degrees Celsius, guys. Uninhabitable. That's actually 0.2 degrees Celsius warmer than last year, which is already a record. Summer 2022 was Russia's third warmest on record as well. After 2021 and 2016, you won't remember that, but hey, everybody's feeling the burn. Scotland is now snow-free again. The last patch, the Sphinx, disappeared sometime in the last 24 hours. The Sphinx has now vanished four times in the last six years, having done so only five times in the past 300 years. That's a pretty obvious direction of, of change. France cuts maize crops further. The drought-affected harvest has now seen 26% lower than last year's bumper crop and 18% below the last five years. France's worst drought on record. Indeed, Portugal's chestnut harvest delayed by drought and is unknown. The IUCN European Red List assessment found that 314 out of 890 species of hoverfly in Europe are vulnerable, endangered, or critically endangered. Hoverflies are critical for the planet's food security because they're second most significant pollinator group globally after bees. This isn't positive or negative. I'm just reporting the news. This is just the numbers and statistics. Some people get a little mm, antsy about this content. Risk of floods as Mediterranean water gets warmer. 500 confirmed dead, 45,000 houses destroyed, and 70,000 hectares hectares of farmland submerged in Nigeria nationwide. Rwanda to restore drought-resistant trees amid rising temperatures, or so they try. Um, Somalians displaced by drought and famine fight to survive, as we are fighting to survive here in the West. But luckily, tech startups are scrambling to save Egypt's farmers from climate change. Cholera outbreaks in Lebanon and Syria threaten millions. We have no dry land left in Pakistan after the flooding. They would be feeling that for years. We kind of expected this already. The India Meteorological Department report that reported that Delhi has so far received 128 millimeters of rain this month, which is the highest recorded precipitation for October since 1956. 33 killed in Nepal, Nepal flooding. Biodiversity threatened in drought hit Poyong Lake. Shocking videos of hundreds of people picking up stranded fish from the bed of Zhangji's province, Poyong Lake, where sustained drought has nearly has turned nearly all of the 3,150 square kilometers of surface water into parched wasteland has gone viral on the internet. But you could be living in Hong Kong during a heat wave as str residents struggle amid sweltering hit heat cramped living conditions. Imagine living in a box during a heat wave. How is that not some special form of hell? I don't know. Mosquitoes move in. Japanese encephalitis virus to worry about in Australia. Started off cool there, but with a few more rainfall records broken, Australian scientists observed rapid decline in penguin numbers off Antarctic coasts. Venezuela landslide ex death toll expected to reach 100 dozens dead in storm as J Storm Julia dumps heavy rains in Central America. California doesn't know how many people died in a record summer heat wave. And also they have a city where water supplies is expected to run out in two months. Phoenix's rainfall totals surpassed numbers recorded in Seattle and other cities. 
Phoenix, Arizona notably, notably experienced more rainfall between July and October than Seattle, San Francisco, and Los Angeles. As we can tell, climate change is bringing more intense rainfall to the U.S., a recent report finds. How many more of these reports do we need, to quote Antonio Guterres? A massive rain, rain hailstorm blew through Fort Stockton, Texas. Hurricane Ian uh, traumatized Floridians and erased their next nest eggs. This is no surprise. Uh, total losses property due, due to property and infrastructure damage is up $29.3 billion in 2022 so far. But this doesn't include Ian, Western Wildfires, and Hurricane Fiona, which may push the 2022 close, total closer to $100 billion a total reached in four of the last five years. Assurance Company lost $339 million in the third quarter of this year, mostly due to Hurricane Ian. Overlapping crises, crises, extremes, hot and cold since 2000, a report in SMH.AU, I guess some university in Australia, and something I was going to mention in the beginning of my last video is that heat waves to make entire regions uninhabitable. The Red Cross and United Nations warned on Monday that heat waves will become so extreme in certain regions of the world within decades, try the end of this decade, that human life will there be unsustainable. Heat waves are predicted to exceed human physiological and social limits in the Sahel, the Horn of Africa, South and Southwest Asia. Billions of people needing to go somewhere to escape the heat and uninhabitable conditions. Where will they go? How will we feed them? Where will we shelter them? We're just going to move them across the land? That's how it's going to work? Sit on it. Again, this is not negative or positive. It's just information. The purpose of this channel is to educate and to inform. That's what I enjoy doing. Hit like and subscribe. Visit the PayPal link below. And I'll talk to you guys later.